morning. Some of this moss. Buenos dias. Good to see each one here this morning. I want to thank you uh, for coming out. It is a joy to be able to come together, to be able to worship the Lord, to be able to look to Him and draw strength uh, from His Word. I want to begin by saying, by apologizing, I've been running around here this morning, as some might say, chicken with his head cut off, but it is a joy indeed to be able to uh, come here and to be able to be together, to be able to study God's Word and, and encourage one another. I would encourage you to bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father, we are assembled here to worship you. And Father, we are thankful for this opportunity to come here to uh, do so. We are thankful, Father, to be able to come here to teach and admonish one another, to edify one another. Father in heaven, we pray that you will strengthen us and help us to always be faithful and true to you. Father, we pray that as we study your word, we'll grow thereby. We pray that we can share the good news with others, that they may come to know you before it's everlasting too late. Father in heaven, we pray for your strength, for your guidance, for your wisdom, Father. It is in Christ's most precious and holy name that we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> This morning I'd like to talk about being deceived. Esta mañana me gustaría hablar sobre ser engañado. Being deceived is being misled. Ser engañado es ser engañado. Uh, kind of interesting in Spanish as you start translating it. It's some of the words use the same words to translate multiple words here. Um, but we hopefully understand the idea of being misled, being deceived, tricked, we might say. Uh, that, that um, and by the way, tricked, again, translated in, in Um But we see there that, that it is uh, something that most of us don't necessarily like to be tricked, do we? We don't like to be deceived. We see much deception in the world. Vemos mucho engano en el mundo. Many people are deceived out of their money. Muchas personas son enganadas con su dinero. We perhaps know people who have been tricked, who have been conned, we might say who have been misled, and, and many efforts are put forth. You have to be careful about what you uh, answer online or, or what you look into because there are those out there who are trying to take your money and trick you into giving it to them. And, and many people, unfortunately, are trying to do so. Politicians, news media, big tech, etc. Many are being deceived. Politicos, medios, medios de comunicación, grandes tecnologías, etc. Muchos están siendo engañados. We see in many areas, and these are just some of those, where you see individuals who are trying to deceive you, trying to trick you, trying to get you to buy into what they are uh, selling, we might say, what they are pushing, what they want. And many in the world are, are doing so. The Bible says much about being deceived. La Biblia dice mucho acerca de ser enganado. We are deceived if we hear the word and do not do as it tells us. Somos enganados si en escucha, escuchamos la palabra y no hacemos lo que nos dice. 
in James chapter 1, verses 22 through 25, Santiago capítulo 1, y versículo 22 al 25. We read, leermos. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So we look at these, these words, we look at what James says here, and we see that to hear the word and not do the word is to be deceived. There are many in this world who profess to be Christian, who profess to be followers of Christ, who profess they love Jesus, and yet they are not obedient to His word. Brothers and sisters, friends, understand this, that we cannot be faithful Christian if we are not obedient to His Word. We can tell ourselves we are. We can tell ourselves that we're, we love Jesus. We can say that we are followers of Christ, and yet our actions demonstrate just the opposite if we are not doing as He has instructed us to do. We think, of course, and we've looked at uh, various texts that teach us uh, this. John 14 and verse 15. Um, Juan capítulo uh, 14 versículo 15. Uh, where we are taught, of course, if you love me, what? Keep my commandments. If we love Jesus, we will keep His word. We will follow His teachings. We see in Matthew chapter 7, verses 26 uh, through 27, Mateo capítulo uh, 7, versículo 26 al 27. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. We are deceiving ourselves and we are being foolish when we do not obey the Word of God. And we can put that in very practical terms and think about, how, I, of course I grew up down south and I remember my dad talking many times. It happened before I was born, but I remember him talking about Hurricane Camille coming through and hitting and, and the destruction that it had. Of course we had Katrina come through a few years ago and, and uh, you could see the destruction from it. But constantly, and we saw just uh, recently, Ian in Florida, where uh, people are being told, what? Get out! Leave! And they were being told this with Camille, and yet many chose not to heed the warning. Chose not to be obedient. And of course, uh, many of them were never heard from again. There were many people who just were gone, uh, never to be heard from after that. And constantly we see this where people do not evacuate in such situations, do not listen, do not follow instructions. Brothers and sisters, we see the, the foolishness of that. And yet that is what many people will do, and they do it religiously, they do it uh, as far as the Word of God as well. We received Him, we say, we have no sin. Somos enganados si decimos que no tenemos pecado. We look and we see in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, Premier Juan capítulo 1, y versículos 8 al Yes, and we see here, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is 
faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We deceive ourselves when we say we have no sin. And yet there are those in this world who, who have stated that. Uh, very high profile individual that I could name all. Uh, not too many years ago made the statement that he saw no need. He saw nothing in his life that he needed to repent of. Understand this. There isn't one of us that can say we are sinless. There's only been one in this world ever who lived a life where he committed no sin, and that was Jesus. I can assure you, every one of us has that need to repent of some sin, and, and we make those mistakes. Even after we've obeyed the gospel, we still make the wrong choice. We still have that need to uh, be forgiven, to seek our uh, Lord's forgiveness. And we see here, again, in verse 8, versículo 8, we see that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. There are many who are in, uh, indeed who, who are uh, deceiving themselves. And, and we see that very plainly. We see uh, very uh, plainly here. Nos enganamos a nosotros mismos. Uh, if we say we have no sin. Si decimos que no tenemos pecado. So we see uh, very uh, plainly that this is a deceptive, but even worse, brothers and sisters. We call God a liar. Pior aún, llamamos mentiroso a Dios. Note again, note Versículo 10, uh, verse 10, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And, and this is true. Why? Because what did he say in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23? For all what have sinned. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We need to realize that the Bible teaches us this, this fact that God says we sin, all sin, all transgress God's law, fail to do that which we know is right. We all do so. And therefore, when we do so, we sin. And to say that we have no sin is to call God a liar. We are deceived if we think we are something when we are nothing. Somos in enados si pen Sabemos que somos algo cuando no somos nada. Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Galatas, capítulo 1, o capítulo 6, versículos 1 al 3. Galatas, capítulo 1. Capítulo 6, y versículo 1 al 3. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Notice that he thinks he cannot fall. There's the idea. Nota que piensa que no puede caer. So he thinks, I'm strong, I'm faithful, I can't make a mistake. I can't sin. Again, we, get, we think back to that idea of a man who says he has no sin. The individual who thinks he can't sin, thinks he's fully able all by himself. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Of course, I've often told uh, the story, if you will, of, of whenever I was in preaching school and there uh, at the school, 
there was a sign, of course, the stairs going from downstairs to upstairs where the school was. Very steep stairs, and there about halfway was a sign quoting this text. Take heed, lest ye fall. And of course, the idea was kind of playing on that, being careful, coming up and down the stairs. But we are warned here to take heed lest we fall spiritually, lest we sin, lest we transgress God's word. We are told, we are warned to watch out. We think about walking around in the dark. Perhaps someone comes along, they don't know about some uh, impediment there, something that would cause them to fall. We might say, take heed lest you fall. Take heed out here. There's, there's some debris there, or there's a post or something, and you might fall. I'm reminded going to the uh, Grand Canyon, uh, stopping there as we went to the march in the Rose Bowl Parade, and I've told this to the congregation a number of times. Being warned, what? Don't go, we were told, don't go wandering around here because about 50, 100 yards, there's a sudden drop. As I've said before, in the Grand Canyon, when they talk about a sudden drop, it's a sudden and very long drop, and you do not want to fall. They have people fall there every year, uh, fall in the Grand Canyon to their deaths. And how tragic it is. Brothers and sisters, we see so many Christians who may get the idea they can do it themselves. They are perfect. They are they are well-seasoned, we might say. They have spent many years. They have grown to be strong Christians. And yet, what do they do? They tend, they might fall. We are deceived if we think we are wiser than God. God. Somos enganados si pensamos que somos más sabios que Dios. Wiser than God. 1 Corinthians 3. Verses 18 and 19, Primer Corinthians, capítulo 3, y versículo uh, 18 al 19. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Many have come to the decision they know more than God. They are wiser, they are smarter than He is. And, and there are many in the world, and sadly, even some within the religious world, who come to that idea, who think they are wiser uh, than God. We look in Isaiah chapter 55 and uh, verses 8 and 9. Isaiah chapter uh, 55 and verses 8 and 9. Isaiah's capítulo 50 55 y uh, versículos 8 y 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Brothers and sisters, we are deceiving ourselves if we think we know more than God, if we think we are wiser than He is. And yet there are many who are doing just that. Consider how often man thinks he knows more about what pleases God than God knows. Consider a cuan a menudo el hombre piensa que sabe más acerca de lo que agrada a Dios de lo que Dios sabe. Often we see people who think they know more about what makes God happy. Salvation. Santiago, uh, capítulo 12, uh, versículo 24, James chapter, uh, 
chapter 2 and verse 24. As you can see, I translated the verses anyway. I, I get so used to putting the, the verses in, um, in Spanish that, that I guess sometimes I, I do just that. But we see that James chapter 2 and verse 24 for anyone who doesn't speak, uh, speak Spanish. You know, we see many who say, what? Faith only. Solo fe. Many, many proclaim uh, just that. And yet, brothers and sisters, friends, there is only one text within the Word of God that you will find those two words together. Faith only. And it is here in James chapter 2 and verse 24. You see then how that by works a man is justified and what? Not by faith only. We are not justified. We are not saved by faith only. And yet many people run around and say that very thing. They proclaim that and, and they have this idea of how uh, to properly uh, do, the, do that. Uh, as far as salvation, salvation. We see raising money, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. For the uh, dinero, Premier uh, Corinthians capítulo 16, versículo 1 y 2. We see many people, I can remember uh, before uh, going to preaching school, working there back home, worked in a telecommunication company. Remember young individual coming in and selling peanut brittle and announcing he was selling it for his church. He was out raising money for his uh, church that he attended and, and he, so he was selling peanut brittle. Brothers and sisters, God's Word does not teach us that we, we raise money for the church in such ways. You hear about congregations or churches or religious groups who who what? They have uh, yard sales. We're going to sell stuff so that we can make money for the church. And they have great intentions uh, in doing so. But, brothers and sisters, the Bible tells us but one way that we raise money for the church. And how is that? That is through giving as we have been prospered. As we are taught, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, the Lord's Supper. Acts chapter 20 and verse 7, La Cena del Señor, Hechos capítulo 20 y versículo 7. We see, of course, many people who uh, discuss, well, when do we take the Lord's Supper? Well, we'll take it every once a month, or once a quarter, maybe once a year. Uh, Brother Leroy Brownlow in his book spoke about uh, about knowing an individual who had not, they had not partaken the Lord's Supper in some 14 years. Some now, even within the church, are saying, well, we can take it on Saturday evenings or some other day. Brothers and sisters, the Bible lays out what God expects. That we partake of the Lord's Supper when? When we come together upon the first day of the week that we do so. And that's what we ought to be doing. We ought to be setting forth. And we can look at any number of other uh, topics that where man thinks he knows better about what pleases God. We think about the mechanical instrument. I, I didn't uh, mention that on here, but we see, of course, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 9, Ephesians capítulo 5 y versículo 19, we see uh, that many people, what? They, they think they know better. This is the right way to do it. We are deceived if we appear to be religious and do not control our tongue. Somos enganados si percemos ser religiosos y no controlamos nuestras lenguas. How sad it is to listen to people who praise God, bless God in uh, one moment, and then are cursing Him and taking His name in vain in the next. And yet, look about you. Listen. You can hear people who profess to be Christians and who are not controlling what they say. You can see, get on Facebook. We, of course, are live on Facebook. and a great avenue to be able to share 
uh, the Word of God with others. Uh, perhaps some may not be able to get here and, and uh, because of illness, and maybe they have the opportunity to listen uh, on Facebook. So very good tech, uh, technology to be able to be used. But watch sometime. Get on there and some, maybe even some of your Christian friends, people who are members of the church, who will get on there and they will say in proverbially here, they put on there something about the church, something about the Lord, and yet then they are sharing profane jokes. Then they are sharing uh, and saying things that are, are wrong. And so we see these things, brothers and sisters, and they are deceiving themselves. In James chapter 1 and verse 26, Santiago capítulo 1 y versículo 26, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridle not his, bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Study James chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. I didn't put it on here, and, and we're not going to read it read it all, but we are warned here about the danger of the tongue and how it is so difficult to bridle, so difficult to control, and indeed, brothers and sisters, it is, isn't it? Some of us, of course anyone knows me, some of us like to talk. And we can get into trouble where we start running our mouths off and saying things sometimes that we ought not to be saying. And this isn't just, by the way, this isn't just the idea that, well, you said some, uh, told some dirty joke or, or used profanity or, or whatever. I understand the Bible condemns many other things we do with our tongue. In this very text, of course, setting on fire things. What? Perhaps we're gossiping. Perhaps we're backbiting. Study Romans chapter 1. Romanos capitulo uno. We see in these how that we are warned about such. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Mateo capitulo 12, y versículo 37. For by the words, excuse me, for by thy words thou shalt be justified. And by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Be aware that our words matter, the things we say. We are deceived if we think we will not reap what we sow. Somos enganados si pensamos que no consecaremos lo que sembramos. Plant corn and you're going to get corn, right? I'm not going to plant corn expecting to get beans. Galatians chapter 6. Verses 7 and 8. Galatians capítulo 6 y versículo 7 y 8. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. What are we saying here? If you live like the devil, expect to get the same results. We might put it that way. And that's a simple way of saying it. If you live like the devil, don't expect that God is going to be pleased with you. Don't expect that He's going to say, come on in, it's okay, I'm, I'm okay, I'm such a great, gracious God, I'm so merciful and kind, it's okay. So much could be said in relation to this point, brothers and sisters. We need to understand how we live our lives. I can't, show up here. Maybe I show up here Sunday morning, and then I go out and I live like the devil the rest of the week. The Lord got His. He got Sunday morning. 
and the rest is mine to do as I please. And guess what we're going to reap by doing so? We won't reap eternal life. We won't reap salvation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10. Segundo Corinthians capítulo 5 y versículo 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We're all going to stand before the Lord someday. We're all going to give an answer for the things we've done in this life. Be assured of this. Now's the time to make sure that we are right in the sight of God. We are deceived if we think that evil, which is misspelled up there, companions will not corrupt good moral somos enganados si pensamos que todos los companions erros no corruptum Corum peran la buena moral. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. 1 Corinthians capítulo 15 y versículo 33. Be not deceived, evil companions corrupt good manners. We are warning. We often warn young people, don't we? Well, be careful who you make friends with. Be careful who you're hanging out with. Guess what? Those of us who are older, we need to be careful who we're calling friends. Now, this doesn't mean, be, be assured, I'm not saying, and the Bible's not saying, that we shouldn't ever go around anyone else. Look at Jesus and his life. This doesn't mean we need to isolate ourselves. We need to be careful that we're not hanging around people who are doing immoral things. The wise man warned his son about such in Proverbs and how that he needed to be careful about going around and participating, being involved in that which is wrong. We are deceived if we think the unrighteous will inherit the kingdom of God. We... Somehow I messed up on that, obviously. I have it in, in English, so I guess vice versa. So in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, we are told just that, aren't we? 1 Corinthians chapter 6, versículo 9 y 10. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Be assured that living in sin, we are not saved. We are not going to be in heaven. And we need to realize that, but we somehow try to justify uh, each other and others and, and so forth. But the truth is that the Bible still teaches um, what it teaches, and we need to remember that. This morning, I want to encourage you, if you are not a Christian, please obey the gospel. Si no eres cristiano, por favor, obedece el evangelio. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Debes creer que Jesucristo es el Hijo de Dios. You must repent of your sins. Debes arrepentirte de tus pecados. You must confess that Christ is the Son of God. Debes confesar que Cristo es el Hijo de Dios. You must be baptized. Debes ser bautizado. Everything is ready this morning, and we'd be glad to help you to obey the gospel. You may have questions about some of these things. If you do, we'll be glad to sit down with you. We'll open up our Bibles. We'll study these things, see what God has to say.
If you are a Christian but have not been faithful, si eres cristiano pero no has sido fiel, you must repent of your sins. Debes arrepentirte de tus pecados. If you need to respond to the invitation, come while we stand and while we sing. Sing. Si necesitas responder a la invitación, bien. Mientras estamos de pie y mientras cantamos. I need the every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like mine can peace afford. I need. 